Did you guys take a glance at the comments during the show at all? Oh, oh yeah. uh, I mean, I usually look to uh, give a give a give a give a look, see, time. see what everybody's up. All the time. I see. Uh, we have some fascinating characters uh, in the live chat. I'll tell you that much. We have some really fascinating people. Oh and, yeah, uh, I love all of them all the same. Good, bad, or, or, or indifferent. That is the best politically correct statement I've heard you say, Tone, and since I've known you. Well, <laughs> D Gun, if you didn't realize, I'm, I'm running for office. I, so. I, know, I, I can see that. <laughs> and here I was, Tone, thinking you were perfect, and now I know that you have one blemish. One <laughs> blemish. You see, Christy. This... See, Christy said we are part of the show, Farzi. <laughs> <laughs> no, you damn right, you are. I, I, I on my show I do a chat check all the time. I see Babs in here. She's a regular on uh, um, on uh, the Fightin's post game that I do here on the Jacob Media YouTube channel. Babs, nice to see you. Uh, Jay, Steve, Chris, Paul Mancini, what's going on? Nice to see oh, everybody in oh, here. Man, talk, what's up? Yeah, this is cool. No, this is great. A lot of lot of good a uh, lot of good stuff in there. Uh, as per usual, even funnier, I, it was even funnier when they start going. You know, when they start uh, feasting on themselves. You know what I mean? It's it's crazy. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you drop blood in the water and, and the piranhas just start feasting on each other, not realizing there's nothing there. Well, one mentioned of Chip Kelly and like Deshaun Jackson and Sean McCoy, Kiko Alonso. And it's like, oh, man, people say, you know, um, you know, what is it? T time heals all wounds. Not for us. Yeah, not, not for the Philadelphia sports scene. We just no, the minute no. we say it again, it's like rage mode. Yeah. It's like we go full yeah. Hulk. You would think a Super Bowl it. would heal all wounds. Um, but. A Super Bowl won't even won't even allow you to forget what Chip Kelly did to uh, to that team. <laughs> uh, I, I know I know a couple of people have mentioned this um, in the chat, but Craig, I, I'm seeing you say it. JJ R. Fega Whiteside with the with the capital. Watching him at training camp was like all oh, the body positioning. This guy's incredible. It's amazing. I remember this is just giving. I remember talking to JJ R. Fega Whiteside. And I remember talking to him about the combine and he told me he had never been in an NFL stadium before. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Wow. And then it turns out he had been in like 10 NFL stadiums where he had played college football games in NFL stadium. And I was like, what the hell was this guy telling me then? What, what is no, that about? The most memorable thing he did in Philadelphia was have his mom hold an umbrella over oh. his head at training camp, and we're standing there going, "What in the bleep is this?" That's when oh. you knew I was lost. That was, that <laughs> was that was the moment you knew. It, it, it wasn't the many drop passes, you know. It wasn't the fact that he couldn't get on the field. It was the fact that he had his mother holding up an umbrella in a practice full of grown men. And a, and a, and a, and a, on a grown man's playing surface, and and I'm and I would have been, mom. You realize you just set me back ten years. You know, I love you, mom, but you just set my, my manhood back ten years by mm -hmm. being out here. And we're standing, we're standing interviewing him, and his mom's holding an umbrella over him. And I'm like, I thought she was. I didn't know it was his mom. I thought it was like personal. I said, this dude haven't even made an NFL roster yet. He's got a personal <laughs> assistant. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it was the equivalent. You know, it's like the it's the it's probably worse. Actually, <laughs> remember, did your mom ever like see something on your face when you were a kid and like lick a napkin and then wipe your oh, face off? The, the, no, no, not a napkin. My mom went ah, ah, ah. A, oh my god, yes, yes. <laughs> hey, mom that. can do whatever they want, man. You know, it's mom. They she can do. But when you get to a certain point in your life, when you're a grown man being paid. As a professional athlete, mom, you gotta know your boundaries. Come on, mom. <laughs> and I'm sure they have a great relationship, and I'm sure she still babies them. Let's face it, you know, being married and telling you don't have kids yet, but you'll understand this. It doesn't make a difference how how old a son gets. A son will always be mama's baby. Oh, trust me, I know my my wife I, gets to me all the time that my mom spoils my brother and I. You know, my mom. Yeah. She, Listen, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. If, if, if we come and visit, she's like, you're hungry? I'll make something. I'll cook I'll cook a whole meal. I'm like, I'm like, mom, I'm not hungry. You're good. She, she's like, you, you want me to do this? You want me to do that? I'm like, mom, I came to see you. I came to relax. You're all good, okay? I don't need you to do these. My my wife keep rips me a new one all the time. She, she, just sits back, she just sits back and she just laughs like, uh, Tom, what would you do without your mom and your dad, really? And I'm like, you know what? I don't know, and I'm okay with that. You know, you, you, know, you, you know what you should say, Tom? 
I mean, I'm not trying to start anything. You should say, well, hun, you need to step up like mom then. <laughs> <laughs> you try to get D gun, D gun. Listen, listen. You know I listen, you know I just moved to Texas, right? Yeah. And yeah. you know, and you know I'm away from my family, right? So if anything happens to me out here, it's a lot of land where you can uh, scatter <laughs> scatter my remains. So uh, I don't know if I'm gonna go that route, but I'll tell you. Let's try that line. See what happens. Listen, yeah. I'll, listen, listen. I'll go your route, right? Just how you say uh, moms, you know, they can do whatever they want. Wives can say and do whatever they want as well. I'll tell you that. Just just be careful. She doesn't come back from like Home Depot with a shovel at some point. Yeah, a lot of cool. land, as yeah, you yeah, said, Tone, and and a bag of cement. <laughs> Gulf of Mexico is not too far away. Anyway, um, so training camp. <laughs> uh, when it comes to um, uh, this game coming up uh, tomorrow, all right, uh, the guy that I really want to see tomorrow night is N'Kobe Dean. We haven't seen him yet. Came back from the ankle injury. Uh, expedited the process when the Eagles made a couple other signings at the linebacker position. Maybe he helped a little competition there. But Gunner Tone, I'll ask you guys this. I want to see him. I think we have to see him at some point, being that he is the signal color of your defense now, and he barely played any defensive snaps, as we all know, last season. So do you think we see him? Is he going to be healthy enough to play? Will they let him uh, out there on the field to hopefully turn some heads? Gunner, what say you about preseason game number two and Nicobe Dean? We going to see him? In the middle of that defense, what do you think? Uh, th this is a big learning curve for him. I do think we need to see him out there. But I will say, uh, I said it last week, and I'll say it again. We, he, he started practicing late last week. But when you're talking about those high ankle sprains, you have to be extremely careful with those because those ain't no joke. You know, you re-injure that thing, instead of being out another week, you could be out a month or so, which could carry over into the regular season. Um, yes, I want to see him in the middle of that defense. I want to see him flying around. I want to see his lateral pursuit. I want to see him blowing through a uh, line of scrimmage, making tackles behind a line of scrimmage. How much do I want to see him? I don't want to see I, I don't need to see a whole lot of him. You know, does he need those game reps? Yes, indeed. But I, I want to make sure that he's right and good to go when we need him the most, because I don't want them to have to scramble and, and revamp that the inside linebacking position. Um, you know, we saw Miles Jack getting some run there. We saw Cunningham out in the field as well. Um, and I'm sure they're capable, but this young man is supposed to be the heir apparent to TJ Edwards in the middle. I need to see a, a small sample size of them. And again, you know how I feel about preseason games and training camp. I am not forming a definitive decision on him. I just need to see something from him. Yeah, I, I agree with you unequivocally, uh, uh, D Gun. It's I don't know, man. This this situation with Nicobe Dean just coming in and just giving him the green dot. I'm not doubting his ability by any stretch of the imagination. But this is a tough situation the Philadelphia Eagles are putting him in. You know, he only started for 34 snaps on for, you know for the Eagles defense last year. Yeah. That's that, that, that's that's not even 10% of the snaps. So so when you think about it from that perspective, He's he, he's he's going to be treading in some pretty dangerous waters here, and it's going to be it, it's literally sink or swim for him. You know, I was of the mindset that you find a way to bring T.J. Edwards back, and then you phase in the Kobe Dean as the off-ball linebacker. That was my that was my perfect game plan for that linebacker position. You bring back T.J. Edwards on a two three year deal. You know, you give him you know a a, 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 a fairly respectable contract. And like when you think about what. They allow TJ Edwards to walk for six me six million. I don't want to say measly million dollars is a lot of money, <laughs> but six million dollars, six six and a half million dollars a year that he got from Chicago. And you know, I was I was speaking to John McMullen about it, and he said the Eagles didn't offer him anything. No. Not even they didn't even negotiate with him. So they already had that set in their mind that Nicole Dean was going to take over this role. And mm -hmm. I, I just don't know how I feel about that, knowing that he's hurt already, knowing the physical toll that playing that position can put on the body. You know, T.J. Edwards accounted for a lot of – T.J. Edwards was ranked in the top five, number three to be exact, I believe, in defensive snaps for the Eagles. He accounted for 94% of the defensive snaps. You have to replace that. And with N'Kobe Dean being hurt already, that makes me extremely nervous. 
And then on top of that, you have a new defensive coordinator. So there's a lot of there's a lot of turnover on this defense. Then you're expecting the Kobe Dean to kind of just come in and just write the ship, at, you know, at, at that linebacker position. This is not going to be a this, this is not going to be as smooth of a transition as people would like it to be. Do I think the Kobe Dean has talent and that he has the mental fortitude and uh, the talent uh, uh, the skill set to be able to uh, be successful? Sure, but he has to be together. He has to. Be on the go and this is a super bowl caliber team this is the team that's trying to win it all right is this the best situation for him given the circumstances of where this team is i don't know if this team was rebuilding or if this team was um still and maybe i wouldn't mind him being the, the you know the starting middle, middle linebacker but this is a team that's ready made and ready to go so it's a lot of pressure on the kobe dean and I don't want this to come off as if I'm doubting him. I'm just acknowledging the simple reality that he is being placed under a lot of pressure for a young player who has started no real reps at all. And on top of that, he hasn't had any live game reps to this day uh, in the 2023 offseason and preseason. We haven't seen him yet. So right. I need to see something. Just like D Guns, I need to see him at least for a drive. I need to see him, you know, maneuvering out there, directing. The I need to see him do something. That's all. That's all. That's all I'm asking for. It's something. I I need to have some level of confidence, right? Like I, I'm not doubting his skill, but I need I need to see why the Philadelphia Eagles are, are so confident. I need to see why they're confident. That's all. Yeah, no, I have him. I feel like I'm pretty optimistic on the Kobe Dean, but I I still need to see him on the football field. Like I have a very right. simple. I don't have him on the same note as like a Jalen Carter or a Nolan Smith, where I went in expecting them to flourish in limited time out there. I have him on the same level as another third round pick. I have him on the same level as Sidney Brown. When I watched preseason game number one, I was like, all right, Sidney Brown, show me something. I was just looking for Jalen Carter to, to prove to me that he could be dominant. And he had one play where he was absolutely dominant. And I'm like, that's all I need. Uh, Nolan Smith obviously got in the backfield and he had a hurry up. He had a quarterback hit. Uh, you obviously saw his speed throughout uh, the limited time that he was out there. I saw that. I was expecting it good. My expectations for Nicobe Dean, I want to see him go out there and just show that he belongs show me that he can have the green dot show me that he can orchestrate the defense show me he can take the plays in relay it to the rest of the team run a clean game defensively show me a little bit of the instinct show me a little bit of the speed let me see in the backfield maybe maybe one aggressive play just just show me that but put my nerves at ease that you got this because i didn't know sydney brown officially got this until he was out there running around i have the same type of expectation uh when it comes to nicobe dean I think he's going to have success. I think he's going to be very good. If I'm buying stock, I'm buying stock into Kobe Dean. But I still need to see it. Uh, I want to see that stock rise after a preseason game, after a series or two on Thursday night. Now, the, the bottom line is, look, he's practicing. He's not a limited participant. He's out there practicing. And the practices are now, as we all have learned, more important than games. But I still would like to see him in a game. I'd like to see him as the middle linebacker of the Philadelphia Eagles for a couple series at least, just to see how he runs everything. Now, bottom line, if you had to say whether or not he plays, Gunnar, I'll ask you first, does N'Kobe Dean play on Thursday night? I think he, if he's deemed healthy enough, he will play a little bit, not much. But you know what the opposite of that is? If he gets out there and re-injures that high ankle sprain, what are we all going to be saying? I can't believe Sirianni and Giannis no. <laughs> put him out there. What were they thinking? Why did they put him out there? Now he's going to be out for an extended period of time. So it's like, damn if you do, damn if you don't, you know? I mean, but, but that's that goes with the territory. I don't want him out there for a long period of time. I just want to see yeah. him work with a little sweat. That's all. That's all it. Break a sweat. Yeah, that's that, that. How much playing time? Well, I got beads of sweat. All right, you're out. Uh, Tone, where are you at? Do you want to see N'Kobe Dean on Thursday night? I want to see him. But if I'm being honest with myself, I don't think we will. Uh, I don't think – you know, let's really take into account how the Philadelphia Eagles you know, do business when it comes to – how they preserve their frontline guys. They've, they've already made up in their mind that Kobe Dean is the starting middle linebacker. They've made that up in their mind without seeing him take any real live game reps except for last, last year when he had 34 snaps. Most of those snaps came in that Tennessee Titans game. Um, but they've already made up in their mind. Uh, them allowing TJ Evers to walk for so little money by NFL standards showed me that they've already made up in their mind that he's going to be their starting linebacker regardless of what's going on. So well, actually, um, you, look at the last to... two linebackers. Look at the last two linebackers, real quick. Tone that that left Philadelphia. 
Alex Singleton and TJ Edwards. They both they signed almost identical contracts. Singleton with the Broncos and uh, Edwards yep. with the Bears. The Eagles, and look, not that they should have, but I'm just saying more so they should have for TJ Edwards than Alex Singleton. But both those guys, uh, two other teams around the NFL went, oh, we have something here. Where the Eagles were like, no, we're good. We're going to roll the dice with Kobe Dean, see what we have there. You know, We already invested a third-round pick on him. Now we don't have to pay him. Uh, as much as we have to pay anybody to stick around. So to your point, yeah, and, they don't, they don't, yeah. they don't see a big price point there. Let me, and, let, and and that's. Let me ask you guys and, this. And that's and that. You go ahead. When, when was the last time they invested heavily in a linebacker? Exactly. Yeah. But but, uh, but here's the like, problem, right? Pico Is Alonso that heavily though. But but here's but I I think that's our problem, and and, and I, I've talked to John about this a lot on Football Twenty Four Seven. You know. He's under the impression that, yeah, a lot of teams don't really value putting too much money into the linebacker position. But he says he thinks the Eagles are taking it too far. And I would have to agree with him. Right. It's not like they're investing 10, 15 million in a linebacker. There are linebackers that are making a lot of money out here. You know, you saw what you saw what the Bears have done. The, the Bears have literally dedicated over one hundred million dollars. at just a linebacker position. That's yeah. asinine in today's NFL. But to six, six million dollars for a player. Six million dollars for a running back is, I guess, a lot depending on your situation. But I'm looking at it from the perspective of the overall allocation of cap. And looking at what TJ Edwards got from the Bears, I think he got like a three year deal, six million, six and a half million a year, something like that, which which would probably top out at like 19 million total. Um, but all, the entire the entire contract isn't even guaranteed. I think only maybe the first year and a half is about guaranteed, if that. So they've just taken it a bit too far. Like you said, Farzy, they Singleton and, and Edwards kind of got similar contracts uh, from the Broncos and the Bears, res, uh, respectively. So when you think about that, is, 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 is that their cutoff point? Like the Eagles aren't even willing to spend $5 million on a linebacker? A season, you know, you can't just keep shuffling that position. In my humble opinion, you got to have some thread of continuity there. And TJ Edwards, being an undrafted guy, you had him right where you wanted him. He was never going to—he was never going to cost you a lot of money at any point in his career. You had him right where you wanted him from a price point standpoint. And they just felt like, you know what, we're going to just continue to recycle that position over and over. One of my fears is that Reed Blankenship. He plays safety, another position that they don't value highly anymore. My biggest fear is Reed Blankenship has fair success in his team, and they eventually let him walk. You know what I mean? Like it's it's, it's just I just have a hard time believing in the that the, I have a hard time believing in their philosophy that you don't have to dedicate any kind of money there. They 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 just taken it a bit too far. Yeah. And you know, Nicobe Dean, he won't be exempt from that. I'm telling you that right now. You know, now granted, they drafted him, and the Eagles treat players they draft a little differently than everybody else. So, you know, we're going to see how this thing pans out. But if Nicobe Dean is just average, you know, don't think he don't think he's going to retire here because the Eagles already made it clear to you that linebackers are not really a part of their long term future. Yeah, the Eagles pay guys that play with their hand in the dirt and quarterbacks, and that's just about it. Maybe every once in a while, blue moon and wide receiver, but that's that's pretty much it. Um, but as far as the Eagles go and the idea of the linebacker right now being a third round pick, uh, I understand Davion Teller no longer here. Obviously, he was a higher pick than we're, what we're used to seeing. But again, not just to go to the contracts of their last two somewhat consistent middle linebackers, but yes, not only TJ Edwards, but also Alex Singleton. They were both undrafted guys. If you're the Eagles, you're looking at this uh, in the, for the upcoming season, assuming it is N'Kobe Dean as your middle linebacker. Oh, look, we've invested a third-round pick. That's our starting middle linebacker now. We have upgraded from a guy from guys that weren't even drafted, guys we took flyers on, guys that had a cup of coffee in the uh, Canadian Football League and Alex Singleton, guys that uh, you know showed some promise in college like T.J. Edwards, and we're going to take a flyer on undrafted guys. Here they drafted a guy that a lot of people consider to be a steal in that draft. The, the Eagles thought they were getting a steal in that draft by taking a guy that a lot of people thought would be at worst a second-round pick in the Kobe Dean, and they got him in the third round, and they expect him, at least right now, for all intents and purposes, to be their starting middle linebacker for, by Eagles' definition, the foreseeable future. That's probably two years when you talk about the life expectancy of an Eagles linebacker. But from their perspective, they're saying that this is a third-round pick they're expecting to get years of work from at that position. It's not money, at least not yet. 
But when it comes to everything else, they've already invested a high draft pick in the position. They haven't done that with you know, guys over the last two years. Well, it was a third round pick that was projected to go in the first round by many of the so-called draft experts. Yeah. And people were shocked that he was still on, on, on the board in the third round, wondering if their shoulder was the problem. See, you know, some players get these monikers attached to their names and all of a sudden their draft status, status stops. I can bet money that when they got him, they were shocked to get him. The wheels were already spinning. We don't have to pay. One thing I, I, I said this yesterday to Tone, Howie has this great insight in terms of as we sit here now, they're already blocking out 2024. They already know who the potential free agents are. They already know who they may try to get back here and who they're not going to get back. I think it was before the season started last year, they realized that we're not going to be, we're not offering TJ Edwards that kind of money, not even knowing what the market was going to get him because what TJ got, was not breaking the bank for linebackers. When you think about money that guys like Roquan Smith and stuff like that got to play the linebacking position, yeah, TJ Edwards wasn't going to get that money. But yet they felt, we got Nicobe Dean. We don't need to pay a linebacker. We got another rookie right. salary, and we can free up money to do some other things, i.e. Miles Jack, Zach Cunningham, and who knows who, who else they're going to try to bring in here once they identify if there's another weakness on this team or if a prominent player goes down and they have to fill a gap in a hurry. This is all strategy on Howie's part, you know. So they, they don't put a lot of money into the linebacking position, and they just hope that whoever they have in here emerges as somebody who can stabilize the position. Mm -hmm. And TJ, TJ Edwards exceeded that. You look at where he went from one year to the next, and everybody's like, we got to bring TJ back. Yeah, Howie's like, yeah, no, pump the brakes on that. We're not paying that kind of money. You know, let's see if this kid from Georgia can do what he did in college. Let's see if we can coach him up. You know, slowly bring him along. We don't have to throw him to the fire. Slowly bring him along and see if we can get him up to what we need for that position. And we're going to find out. We're going to find out real soon. And, and by real soon, I mean, hey, the regular season is less than a month away. Think about that. So, That's a, it's uh, really, really, really quickly, TJ Edwards' his contract, uh, his average salary is $6.5 million. It's ranked 40th. Amongst active linebackers, that includes inside and outside linebackers. And you, tell and you know, me something, and, 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 and you know, some outside linebackers are considered edge rushers. So just, just out line guys that are designated designated as a linebacker. Hmm. TJ Edwards' contract is ranked 40th at six and a half million. 40th. Just want to put that in perspective for you Eagles fans. And you're telling me um, he just couldn't afford that? How he couldn't afford it? Yeah, of course he could. They're not doing. He wasn't doing. It. He wasn't ever doing it. Yeah, uh, how he could get 15 running backs for that one price. So, yeah, he wasn't going to spend that coming on a, a linebacker there. He wasn't going to spend that keeping a linebacker in Philadelphia, especially, Gunnar, to your point, they already have N'Kobe Dean. They, they, in their mind, like you said, rookie contract, they'll be good to go for at least a couple of years here with N'Kobe Dean. Yeah. But now, just to put a bow on the N'Kobe Dean conversation for a second here, you look at this defense, I, I just – you could say it's rose-colored glasses. You could say it's being a homer. But I just – I am so excited about this defensive line. And look, whoever your linebacker is going to be, I feel like you could almost talk about it with a, like you would a running back. Like whoever's running behind this offensive line is going to have success. Whoever's going to be playing defense behind this defensive line I think is going to have success. There's going to be a little bit of a learning curve there, a little bit of leeway, being that the guys in, in front of you are so talented. When you talk about Nolan Smith coming off the edge, you talk about Josh Sweat, you talk about Brandon Graham, you obviously have uh, Hassan Reddick already, but Jordan Davis, Fletcher Cox, Jalen Carter. You, you all... mentioned Derek Barnett. You left out Derek Barnett. Oh, how did that happen? Oh, wait, <laughs> that was intentional. Anyway, so, <laughs> but no, I just, I feel like your linebacker is going to have time to grow. I think Nicobe Dean, if he needs it, is going to have time to grow because there's a lot of talent around him. And your secondary, by the way, let's not forget about that. I've said this before. You got uh, corners that can play to the cows come home and your three regular guys, including your nickel and Avante Maddox. Then you have younger guys that are looking to continue to prove themselves at the NFL level. And I think a secondary that is going to be pretty damn special this year. So your middle linebacker, I think the Eagles right now, whenever they look at that position, they ultimately devalued it. Tone, the perfect example, when you talk about the 40th, high, 40th highest paid, that's ridiculous. But you can afford that right now with the defense that's going to be around that middle linebacker. So I think there's leeway there, Gunner, when it comes to that position for the Philadelphia Eagles in the upcoming season. Howie has to keep some money free just in case he has to make another move, which I fully expect to see another move somewhere early in this season. You know, we don't know what that's oh. going to be. Early I in the season, not preseason. 
I appreciate. It. I don't see. I don't see it being like another splash, like bringing in Damika and Sue in here. Okay. But they very well could bring somebody in here who's been around the block a few times that they identify is is already a proven player that can come in and help this team. You know, and Damika and Sue and Linville Joseph helped this team. Robert Quinn did not. It's hit or miss. You know, when you think about it, and so th- that's why at this stage you have to let it settle in. We have to see what we have. We have don't don't jump the gun and bring in somebody who could kind of negate development time of some young players. Let these young guys go. Let's see what we have before we sit down. And on top of that, when the cuts come down in early September, let's who see let's see who clears the waiver wires. Let's see who other teams are cutting before we make a definitive decision to see if we need to add that kind of individual to what we already have. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's so, so, so interesting because uh, as far as, you, you know, you mentioned how excited you are, you know, for this, you know, for this defensive line and, you know, this defense, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's so many things that we don't know about it. And I think, and I think that's where the excitement stems from. It's like, I like to compare it to like a Christmas list or like Christmas day, right? You know, when you're a child, you, you form your Christmas list, you know, all the things you want, right? You write it down and, you know, you want that new Tonker truck, you know, you want that new, uh, you want that Nintendo switch, you know what I mean? You want you want Nicobe Dean to be an all pro linebacker. You want Nolan Smith to have 10 sacks. You want Jalen Carter to, you know, to be defensive rookie of the year. You know, you, you want Sidney Brown to, you know, to lead the league and force fumbles. You have this list that you want and then you submit it to your parent. You submit it to old St. Nick and then you're sitting there waiting and that anticipation is building. You're just hoping that everything you ask for comes to fruition. That's what this season is right now when it comes to that defense. We have so many things that we're asking for to happen. And the rude awakening is when you're a kid, you don't always get everything you ask for on Christmas. Sometimes you get the cheap man version of the iPod Nano. Maybe your mom got you an MP3 player instead of an iPod touch. <laughs> so I'll put it to you this way, man. There, there we're going to, Some questions are going to be answered this season. Some questions won't be answered. Actually, some questions may lead to more questions. So we're not going to be able to check every box this year with this defense, but all I ask for at the very least with this defense, right? Obviously, we want the rookies to do well. We want to know we made a good decision with Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, and the City Brown guys like that. All I want really from this defense this season, I don't need them to be ranked top five. I don't need them to be ranked top seven or top three. What I want from this defense, I want timely stops and key moments. I don't need them to lead the league in uh, opponent points per game. You know what I mean? Like I, I want them to be able to have an – I want situational football to be at an all-time high. That's, that's what I want more than anything else. Can they make the stop that's necessary for the offense to sustain a victory or at least seek out the victory, right? Can this, can this defense limit the damage enough to the point where if Jalen Hurts gets this team a lead – can this defense get a key stop at a key moment? If Jalen Hurts needs a stop so he can take that team down the field to get a game-winning field goal, can this defense get that stop to give Jalen Hurts in that offense enough time? That's what I'm asking for. Forget the stats. Forget the numbers. I'm asking for effective, timely, situational football. That's what I, that's all I want from this defense. So you want a defense that gets the ball back in the offense's hands consistently? No, Does the no, offense no. has the capability of being so explosive? No, not necessarily that, because I, I I believe this offense is going to carry this defense more than anything. It is. But all I'm asking for is because I feel like it's hard to have a shutdown defense in, in today's NFL. The rules don't the rules don't apply to that. But if this defense can just get timely stops, right? Just timely. You know, you you, you can't stop everything. The defense, the, the opposing offense is going to score on this defense. They will. But if you can get that stop in the third quarter, if you can get that stop in the fourth quarter. You know what I mean? That just gives your offense because you can't, you can't, you can't outscore everybody every damn game. You just can't. So, can you get that timely stop? You know, can you, you know, can you get that timely defect, uh, deflection, that timely third down stop? You know, just to give your offense a chance. That's all I'm asking for. I'm not asking for the world of this defense. I just want timely football. That's all. You want an adjustment in the second half of the Super Bowl. That's what you want. 
uh, <laughs> you want you most notably an adjustment that forces that fumble just, to give the ball back to this to back to the offense. I know go. what you're saying. I'm coming back. Did, I'm coming back. Did, I, did I make it too obvious? Just a little bit. Uh, by the way, speaking of that um, defensive coordinator, a lot of people have compared Sean Desai to Jonathan Gannon and saying you're going to get Jonathan Gannon's defense, but there's going to be just a different name penciled in with defensive coordinator next to it. In the early goings of camp, not so fast on that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Lazy narrative. We're going to talk about what Sean Desai is doing different because it's uh, rather odd. We're going to get into that. And also, I'll say goodbye because my last segment is going to be coming up here. Uh, it'll be uh, Tone and uh, Gunner, of course, to uh, round out the show. My name is Mark Farzad. I'm in for Rob Ellis. That's Tone to Shields. That's Derek Gunn. We'll be back with Sports Taking a Few to talk about what Sean Desai is doing differently with this defense.